kick start with a quick recap. Okay, so last week we covered a few few interesting concepts, right? Okay, so let's start off with uh, what have we covered last week? Okay, you can utilize the chat function, you can type out. Okay, what have we covered last week? You still remember? Today we'll be covering similar concept. Uh, so we require all of you to to have last week's concept before you can move on. Come on. Comparative advantage. Right, so let's start off with what is compared relates to opportunity cost. Yes, quick please utilize the check fu chat function. Metro and specialization. I believe the metro is, is in plural, right? Okay, so let's start with two metro. Okay, what does two metro stands for everyone? Okay, please quickly help me. Two metro. Yeah, yesterday I recorded this, but for some strange reason my clip was like lagging one second. <laughs> <laughs> my audio is faster than my mouth. <laughs> I couldn't use any yesterday's clip at all. Quick, come. What is, what 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 what's two metro here? What does two stand for? Without looking at the book, no books. Please, no books. No books. Look at the camera. No books. Thank you. Yeah, please help me with two metro. Thanks. What does two stands for? Try yourself. Two. Okay, two economy and two goods. Uh, M. What does M stands for? So last week a lot of students did not bring in the the assumption for, for this, huh? Okay, and this is not really good if you don't have assumptions for your theory of comparative advantage. Okay, mobility of your factor of production, right? Okay, perfect mobility. E? E stands for what? Read out the book. Okay, full employment. Employment of resources. T? Transport cost, right? There's no transport cost. R. Okay, the boy seems to be really quiet. All the girls are participating. Boys. Not, not, uh, nothing to do with resources. Okay, it's got to do with restrictions. Okay, to be more specific, we're looking at trade restrictions. Okay, there are no trade restrictions. Okay, and uh, no trade sanctions. Okay, and O stands for opportunity cost. Okay, constant opportunity cost. Okay, I want you all to download the script from your from the from your folder uh, last week. Okay, take a look. Take a good look at your script. Okay, I'll be using the I'll be using uh using this this particular uh time to recap on. Uh, on top of re recapping concepts, we'll also be addressing some of your your script, your problems from your script last week. And most of you managed to 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 do relatively well. So if you are not passing, uh, it means that something is really wrong, huh? Okay. So have you downloaded your script from the LMS? Okay. So I'm going to go through a quick recap on the four tables, huh? Okay. So the four tables. Okay. What are some of the issues with the four tables? Okay, so problem number one. Okay, for those who stated step one, okay, most of you have managed to adopt the correct table or use the same table, uh, right? So the the issue with the with with, with step number one, uh, is a lot of students did not tell me what is the world total. Okay, you have to tell me that the world total is hundred and sixty five, and because later on we'll we'll have to we'll see that the world total will increase to hundred and seventy five. Okay, so make sure you sum up okay, the world total. So most of the students don't have an issue with uh, step one. Huh? The figures are exactly the same. Right, so step two, right, some of the common issues down here, most of the students were able to, in fact, all of the students were able to correctly decipher the opportunity cost, okay, which is job well done. But I want you to check your script. Okay, remember, we are studying theory of comparative advantage. 
So it simply tells us that we need to identify which country to produce what. Okay, so by simply vomiting out the figures and the table, it will not guarantee you credit. Okay, you have to tell me which country has a lower opportunity cost in producing what. So in this case, US has a lower op cost producing wheat because it sacrificed lesser cloth and China has a lower opportunity cost producing cloth because they sacrifice or they forsake lesser wheat. So check your step two. Okay, whether you have specified which country to, spe to, to specialize in which production due to lower opportunity cost. Another mistake that I often see in some of the scripts, uh, theory of comparative, uh, theory of CA is all about opportunity cost. Okay, not about monetary cost, not about labor cost, and okay, nothing to do with that. Uh, it's all about opportunity cost. Uh. Okay, so make sure you include opportunity cost in your illustration. Right. So step three, I want. So some of some of the students were not able to complete okay the illustration and move on to step three and four, which is which is quite a waste. Okay, for those who actually move on to step three, okay, some of the issues that I encountered while I was reading your script, like I've said, most of you have no issues rehearsing the answers. Okay, you can blah blah blah, blah vomit out all the answers. Okay, the table especially, but there is an issue in illustrating how you get the numbers. That's the most important concept okay, that wasn't explained. Okay, so you realize that the initial figures here was 50 and 100. Okay, so you uh, most of the students did not tell me how okay, United States, when they give up five cloth, they can gain 10 weeks. Okay, I believe the earlier figures here was five and 10, right? And likewise, Okay, most of the students did not tell me how China can forsake five weeks to gain 10 cloth. Okay, so remember if you haven't, okay, this is the best chance to include, uh, okay, or to, to, to illustrate how you get all these figures. All right, so you realize that, okay, all these figures I obtained from, okay, the cell on comparative disadvantage. Okay, let me repeat. Okay, it comes from comparative disadvantage. Okay, so for China or for United States, okay, you realize that they have comparative disadvantage in cloth production. To produce one extra cloth, they sacrifice two units of wheat. Okay, so in, in other words, okay, to sacrifice one cloth, you gain two weeks. Okay, so you sacrifice five cloth, you gain ten weeks. Okay, so the first row is actually obtained from Okay, the comparative disadvantage cell from United States. Okay, likewise for China is the same. Okay, the second row comes from here. Okay, all you need is just to change this. Sacrifice okay, and gain. Okay, so most of the students did not illustrate how the partial specialization works out. Huh? Okay, the numbers you don't pluck them from thin air. Okay, they can be deduced correct um, with precision. And okay, one of the common mistakes in, in table three is students did not tell me what total. Okay, one second, uh, let me invite the dog out. Okay, will you guys look through the table. I'm so sorry, you know, when you have a dog right beside you. <laughs> I think some of y'all can relate to this, right? Can y'all? I think Erica can relate. I'm not sure about the rest. No dogs at home. So far, for step three, any issues? Step three. Are you all good, huh? Okay, so check your, check, your, check your answers for step three. Okay, so you need to state that world total is higher. Okay, some of the students here actually went for full specialization. Okay, full specialization uh, also works. Okay, so what, what, what do I mean by full specialization? Okay, it simply means that when United States give up all their cloth production, okay, they are going to produce up to 200 weeks. Okay, that also works. Then you will have a different set of figures. Lah. Okay, it will be 220. Huh? Alright, for step number 4, okay, you realize that step 3 and step 4, they are related in the sense that okay, there is exchange of cloth and wheat. Okay, so you can see that 
uh, um, China is going to sell their excess cloth to United States and US is going to sell their excess excess wheat to China. So, uh, common misconception or common mistakes in this particular diagram or particular illustration, terms of trade. Okay, please tell me what is the terms of trade. Okay, you have to tell me that well, terms, terms of trade will be one cloth is equivalent to one wheat. Okay, you don't necessarily need to tell me that it has to fall within the existing op cost. Don't need to tell me that. Okay, but you need to make the correct assumption. Okay, these figures are not plucked from thin air. Uh, then we can see that when countries specialize and when they exchange, there will be a higher world production and higher consumption. Okay, consumers can consume out of their PPC. Right, so I've pointed out most of the mistakes, so please pay attention. For students who are having a uh, trait in their upcoming June common test, okay, it's quite likely that the table will come out. Uh, okay, so please know the table by heart. Right, for people who are schoolers, okay, this is your your only chance to recap on that. Huh? Okay, and lastly, I want to cover okay, uh, briefly on sources of comparative advantage. All right, so uh, we have went through this coffin last week. Okay, the only exception that I, I, I skipped was uh, item three. Okay, most of the time was item one, two, and four. Okay, so uh, let me do a quick recap. Sources of CA will be tested later in the quiz. Okay, and possibly later in the time practice. Okay, so later on, why is this going to come out in the time practice later? Okay, it's because there will be a related concept that will be learning under patterns of trade. Okay, comparative advantage is one of the okay, uh, common factor okay, among our patterns of trade. That's why I emphasize this is exceptionally crucial. Okay, so sources of comparative advantage, we can see that difference in technology level will result in different countries having different comparative advantage in different productions, okay, especially in, uh, in inter-industry trade. Uh. Okay. So different and difference in factor endowment. Okay, this will this will lead to okay, different resource allocation in the country. Okay, so later on in the quiz you'll probably experience this firsthand. What do we mean by different factor endowment? Alright? Okay, and dynamic comparative advantage means that your comparative advantage can be can be cultivated. Okay, it can be built over time. Okay, so later on in the time practice, okay, you probably can see this as well. Okay, so know this uh, table by heart. Okay, it's going to be tested uh, in, a, in a short while. So I believe I'm done with the recapping okay, of the four tables and uh, diet. Uh, questions for me? If you have any questions, please put it out on the chat or I'll pick it up from there. Okay, so with this, I'm going to move on to the quiz. Uh. Okay, the quiz is not difficult, okay, but the quiz requires all of you to be meticulous. Okay, especially okay, there is one question on op cost tabulation. Okay, I've inserted the link onto the quiz uh, onto the onto the chat function. Okay, please join the link. So make sure you get the calculation question right, uh. Very, very important. Okay, so later on you're expected to tabulate op cost yourself. Uh. One more. Alright, so remember, uh, prepare your calculator. Okay, there's a good chance that you may need that. Okay, you don't want to be... Uh, let me check the setting one more time. Huh? Okay, uh, show answers and questions. Okay, got it. Okay, so when you're ready, okay, all the best. Let's go.
Okay, this is the table that you all have to focus on the best. You have one minute. Read the question carefully. Okay, well done Felicia. Okay, and the rest uh okay, try other. Okay, so I'll go through the answers, huh? Okay, so for those who got wrong earlier on, can okay, make sure you uh clarify with me on the spot. Okay, which other questions that you are uh, you didn't get it correct. Okay, so according to tier of CA, a country will only export only if okay, I've, like what I've mentioned, okay, CA is all about op costs, huh? Okay, it's not about production cost, it's not about labor cost, it's not about any other cost other than op cost. Okay, so make sure this syncs here, op cost only. 
Okay, so according to theory of CA, which is not a reason why countries trade. Okay, here. Okay, the last one. Okay, exports give a country over political advantage. Okay, it could be true. Okay, but it is not what theory of CA covers. Theory of CA is all about op cause, right? So what is the crucial assumption for theory of CA? Remember, we covered two metro. Okay, so this particular question, the concept that is testing you is constant opportunity cause. Alright, so remember last week we covered that your PPC curve will be downward sloping. Okay, why? Because of perfect factor mobility. Okay, your, your op cost will be constant. It will be a downward sloping okay, straight line PPC. Okay, so this one important. Uh, most of the students for some strange reason for this class especially, okay, all, all, all flop for this. Uh. Okay, so what is not a source of comparative advantage? You realize that this is technology. Okay, technology, I believe, is under which one? Uh? Okay, let's look at look up for the coffin again. Okay, difference in rate of technology. You see that? Okay, and demographic dividend, it is a form of factor endowment in labor. It simply means that the country is more populated. Okay, there's higher population because of high birth rate. That's why you have demographic dividend. So this is factor endowment, uh, international factor endowment. Economic dynamism okay, is the last D. Okay, so the rate option is what? Okay, is actually a limitation from your theory of CA, currency restriction. Huh? Okay, so this is not a source of comparative advantage. So according to theory of CA, countries can gain from trade because... World output can rise when countries specialize in their relative best. Okay, the rest, rate one has nothing to do with theory of CA, although in theory it could work. Okay, so in the green one, okay, it tells us that if a country has absolute advantage, then there is no basis of trade. Yeah, so nothing to do with comparative advantage and course again. Clear? Okay, so this question, okay, I want for those who didn't get it right, uh, okay, I'm going to go through all go through this together. Okay, please pen this down okay, and, and, and take notes. Uh. Okay, so let's draw this out together. Okay, let's draw the table together. We have Australia and we have Brazil. Okay, and what are the two goods again? Okay, we have slat and clarinet. So Australia can produce 300 slats, 2 clarinet, and Brazil has 200 slats and 1 clarinet. So we can see that Australia has absolute advantage, right? In both production. So based on absolute advantage, Australia is self-sufficient. There is no basis of trade, right? Okay, and therefore, absolute advantage is not the focus here. Okay, we want to find out okay, which country has a lower opportunity cost in which production. So how do we actually convert this? Okay, all we need to is just to express okay, one good in another. Okay, so this one is the most important part, especially if you get this table wrong. Huh? Okay, so please join me. Australia and Brazil. Slats and clarinet. So if you want to find out what is the op cost of producing slat, we will express slats in terms of clarinet, right? Okay, 300 slats is to 2 clarinet. Okay, one slat will be 2 over 300 clarinet. Okay, likewise, okay, for Brazil, okay, you want to express slats in terms of clarinet. 200 slats is 1 clarinet. One slat is 1 over 200 clarinet. Right? Okay, if you want to express clarinet in terms of slat for Australia, it will be 2 clarinet is to 300 slats. And... Okay, one clad, clarin clarinet is to 150 slats. And the last one is very simple. Okay, there is no need to divide anything. Okay, so we can quickly identify that Brazil has a lower opportunity cost in pro on, on slat production. Okay, and Australia has a lower opportunity cost in clarinet production. Is everyone following me? These are simple figures, huh? Okay, if you didn't catch this, catch up on the record later. Okay, all you need is just very simple mathem mathematical uh, adjustment. 
Right, so we can see that Brazil has a comparative advantage in slab production. See that? Okay, because it's lower than Australia. So this one must get it right. Huh? If not, huh, last week's effort is totally gone to waste. Okay, so what is Australia's opportunity cost of slab production in terms of clarinet? Okay, we can see Australia will be 2 over 300. This one, this is the one. Huh? So which is the most correct option? You realize that red is confirmed not the correct option. Okay, because you realize that Australia is already having absolute advantage, right? So based on that, okay, you realize that if they have an absolute advantage, okay, by right, they shouldn't be engaging in trade. But if they are if you're look, looking at a comparative advantage, then there is basis of trade. Okay, when countries are can produce at a lower up cost in different production. I'm not sure why my dog is barking like crazy. <laughs> Can you all hear? Can you all hear that? Yeah, maybe I should put a muzzle on. <laughs> right, so most of this, uh, I don't get why the red option is wrong. Okay, the red option is strictly wrong, okay, because we are learning comparative advantage, not absolute advantage. If you are learning about absolute advantage, sure, Australia doesn't need to trade, okay, but you realize that when we uh when we when countries specialize in production that they have lower opportunity costs, then there will be higher world output. Okay, so absolute advantage is a myth. Okay, it's a myth that has to be broken. That's why it can't be correct. Like I say, this question is all about most correct, huh? Okay, so blue and yellow is seemingly correct. You realize that blue, okay, Brazil has a lower opportunity cost in slab production. Australia has a lower opportunity clause in clarinet production, right? You see that? So these, these two are seemingly correct. But like I said, okay, the most correct option would be the one in green. Because last week we went through an activity, right? If your opportunity call or if your if your if your terms of trade is unfavorable, then in that case one country is going to be better off than the other. Okay, so we have to know what's the thought first, huh? Okay, if not Okay, we cannot decide okay, whether there's basis of trade. Is everyone clear? Especially the red option, uh, okay, I mean, this one is confirmed wrong. Uh, okay, if you don't if you don't get it, you stay back and ask me later. <coughs> hey, so this is what we are going to cover today. Okay, but anyway, most of, most of you got it right. In fact, all of you all got it right. <laughs> so I'm not going to cover that. So is theory of CA likely to hold in reality? Okay, unlikely, okay, because of multiple limitations of CA. Okay, what are some of the limitations? You see that two metro doesn't hold in reality. Huh? Okay, it can't be true. But theory of CA forms a basis of trade. Okay, and we can, we can actually look at trade patterns from there. But is it going to really explain trade? Okay, not really. Okay, because in reality, there are other factors that affect trade. Okay, got it? Alright, so if you have any more questions, please type it out. If not, stay back and ask me. Huh? Okay, I'm going to close this and I'm going to move on to today's objective. I'm so sorry, uh, when spade in bugs, it actually, it actually breaks my concentration. I'm not sure, but I'm going to bring her to... I'm going to sterilize her next week. I'm actually quite mixed. <laughs> I'm not sure after sterilization, will, will, will spade in be a bit more quiet. <laughs> if any of you have uh, experience sterilizing your pets let me know so i can learn from all of you <laughs> whether do they become more docile or they become more quiet <laughs> okay so today uh sorry for digressing okay uh, let's move on to today's objective huh? today we'll be covering the second of the third series of trade okay so we will be learning three more acronyms today okay so on top of two metro last week Okay, so we'll be learning benefits and cost of trade. Okay, these are the two acronyms that we'll be learning. Uh, patterns of trade. Uh, just a quick show of hands, who have not learned patterns of trade? Okay, so the rest have learned already. Yeah? Okay, so patterns of trade, they are important. Please put a star. Okay, so today, whatever that we will be covering, okay, they are important for trade. Okay, so they form the whole trade series. Huh? 
So if you are if you ha- you ha- if you have been struggling for the past few topics on macro on standard or living or whatsoever, trade is actually your your wild card. Okay, it's your wild card to actually, it's actually your wild card to actually uh, level your playing field. Okay, so we'll be covering inter industry and intra industry trade. Okay, and after that. Okay, we'll be going on to the exam purpose. So uh, patterns of trade will be uncovering from the inter intra industry. Okay, give me a second. Okay, I think somebody asked me a private question. Okay, got it. He replied already. So I know that there are uh, all the gens down here haven't haven't covered patterns of trade. So please don't 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 get caught falling asleep, huh? Okay. So I would like you all to flip to page one two nine. Okay, we'll be covering patterns of uh sorry benefits of trade. Okay, pen benefits of trade. All right. So uh one one more thing. Okay, there will be an optional assignment. Okay, look at look out for lesson twenty seven. Ah. Uh. Hey, lesson twenty seven. There's an optional assignment. Hey, you can see here optional assignment. I've uploaded the question paper and the answer key. Okay, so you can see the instructions here. Okay, the due date is due tomorrow Sunday. You ask me whether you need to do or not. I can't tell you. Okay, this is an optional assignment. If you do good, okay. If you don't do, also good because I have lesser things to mark. Huh? Okay. So the optional assignment is a、uh, is a practice question based on what we are going to cover in this particular slide. Ah.、Uh. Okay, on benefits and cost of trade, clear. Okay, so make sure you follow the instructions clearly on the on the lesson folder on how to submit the optional assignment. Okay, if not, I will give I will, I will grade zero and I return you and return you an empty script. Huh? Okay, so benefits and cost of trade. What do we need to know? Okay, so these are the two new acronyms that we will be learning. Ah,、uh. okay. So、uh, I will be covering the left column first. Benefits of trade. Right, so I have a mixture of macro and micro concepts that you can consider to use when we are covering benefits of trade. Okay, so the the optional assignment will be on benefits of trade. Okay, so you can see that some of the、uh, alphabets here, okay, can be used together, okay, to illustrate particular concepts. For instance, you realize that higher consumption of goods and services, greater world output. Okay, they can be illustrated using theory of CA. Okay, so make sure you are comfortable with theory of CA and the four tables, ah.、Huh? Okay, and especially if you did not finish last week, okay, you submitted half a script. It means that you are not writing fast enough, or your concept is not strong enough. Ah,、uh, then you possibly okay may want to may want to revise okay last week's lesson first before you attempt the optional assignment. Okay. So you can use the theory. Of, you can use what we have learned last week and the four tables approach to address higher consumption and total world output. Okay, these are these are two same points that you want to use. All right. So you can also consider okay variety. Okay, variety of goods and services. So variety of goods and services are often what they are often illustrated using examples. Okay. So what is an example of a variety of Of goods and services that are available to consumers, so when you are supposed to illustrate this point, okay, type out an type out type out an example of what do we mean by variety of goods and services. I ask example. Come on, <laughs> not certain product of, gotta be specific. Specific. Same. Okay, I'm not talking about different types of necess and be specific. Yes. Okay. So someone brought food choices. Okay. You can. T- you got to be specific. Ah.、Uh? So for for Singapore, if you're looking at food, fruits to be more specific. Different style of clothes. Ah.、Uh, okay. So fruits like strawberries. Like uh, orange oranges. You realize that Singapore themselves, they uh, ourselves, we don't produce fruits, ah.、Huh? 
Okay, so with trade, we are going to enjoy greater variety of goods and services. So especially if you are bringing up item 3, uh, some of the key terms that you want to bring in will be the quality of the example, okay, and the specific aspect of how consumers can be better off in terms of consumer welfare, okay, and your standard of living, okay, especially your non-material standard of living. Okay, so make sure you have all these terms okay, they are ready to, to illustrate. I know that I'm not sure whether those who have not learned you have your school notes with you. If you don't have your school notes with you, then no choice. Uh. For those who have learned, you can, can tally the points they are about the same. Uh, about the same. Okay, so this is what I recommend. No need to know too much. Okay, cover, you can know any tree down here. Okay, and later on you can know any tree on the right. Alright, so we can also we can also look at how it is going to stimulate economic growth, okay, through the increase in your net export. So for instance, okay, if a country can specialize, okay, they are able to export their goods and services, okay, this will result in higher net exports, right? So the assumption here is okay, your imports remain the same, huh? very important. Very, very important assumption. Why? Because when there is trade, there is free trade. It simply means that you can sell and buy goods and services without trade restriction. Okay, so if you're if you are going to import more than you're going to export, then your net export is going to go down. Okay, so you must make the assumption. Okay, in order for you to experience a form of benefit from higher net exports, your import must remain the same, or it is growing slower than your exports. Then you can potentially relate to higher AD. Okay, and higher real national income okay, through your ADAS framework. Okay? okay, use the six step framework here. You can also use balance of trade if you like. All right, the last one okay, on economies of scale. Okay, just let's do a quick recap. Where did we cover economies of scale? When did we cover that? Which concept is this related to? Tap it up. Good net. So what does what does it tell us? What does economies of skills tell us? Yeah, I want you all to make a mental note, nah. Huh? Economies of scale. Okay, we are looking at at what? Page 30. Everyone, flip to page 30. And page 29. Okay, we are looking at internal and, and or external economies of scale. Huh? So today, I won't be covering economies of scale because okay, I will cover up. This is not the focus for today. It will be covered in micro. So all I want you all to note okay, is this particular um, this particular uh, this particular economies of scale, internal economies of scale known as specialization. You realize that specialization uh, okay, is used in our practice question earlier on, right? You realize that when countries specialize, okay, due to uh, they are able to gain um, they are able to when they, when they specialize on the good that they have lower up cost, then there will be gains of trade. So we can potentially illustrate this from a cost cost perspective. Uh, Okay, so once you specialize, you are able to reap your economies of scale. So if you if you realize that you don't understand what Mr. Teo is saying, uh, it means that you need to come for the year one uh, firms and decision classes. You really need to come. Okay, so you cannot afford to bury this and sweep, sweep it under the carpet. I can assure you that's the surest way to die. Huh? Okay, you realize that economies of scale can be tested here. Uh, okay, so it is a valid point. Okay, that... Okay, firms can achieve a lower production cost okay, when they specialize. Okay, gains of trade. Okay, and if the entire industry experience cost saving is in the in the same in the form of economies or concentration, then the entire LRAC curve will shift downwards. Okay, at every output level. Okay, so I will be covering this under lesson 20 in the J1 series. Okay, so please make a mental note. Lesson 20. Okay, please make a book please book please book the slot in advance. I can I can guarantee that. Okay, there are a lot of problems here. Okay, lesson 20. Okay. 
So, uh, I'm going to move on to the right side. Any issues with the left side? On how cover is covered? <laughs> cover is covered. All right, benefits uh, I've covered already. So this, this will be the practice question. So for cost of trade, you want to look out for the other two C's, which are often, which are often and, um, uh, used. Which are the other two C's that can be used to replace COST? Come on. Concerns. Consequence. Not constraint. Not constraint. <laughs> Okay, con con consequence and constraint are two different concepts. Okay, but they belong to the same decision making framework called yeah. rational decision making. Huh? Okay, so no no constraints here. We are looking about consequences, cause and concerns. So you realize that this particular um the the, the, the second column here is closely related to arguments for protectionism, which we will be covering next week. Have y'all learned protectionism already? Anyone? If y'all haven't learned patterns of trade, then cannot be learning protectionism. What about the rest who have learned? Ladies, have y'all learned protectionism already? Kind of. I don't know. Quick, quick, can you can you can you indicate? Will, will protectionism be in your? That it will can't possibly be in your June common test, lah. But <laughs> like what I mentioned, uh, okay, this topic will not be will not be will not be buried one more time, uh. Okay, if it has been buried for the past two years, won't be buried again, uh. So must know this. Okay, so we'll be we'll be covering this again, but let me quickly cover okay, what are some of the points that you can consider. Okay, so we can see that when a country okay is overly reliant on other countries, okay, and and you realize that these two points can be used together. When a country is overly, overly reliant on other countries or necessities such as food, okay, this will make them susceptible to external shock. Right? So you realize that whatever I'm saying here may sound very distant, right? But if you look at the news that's happening these few days, okay, what is the what is the biggest headline news that's happening to Singapore right now? What's the what's what's the, what's what's the headline news? That's happening to Singapore and Malaysia. That's related to this. <laughs> See? Now you all start to realize, right? Okay, that okay, Singapore is very dependent on okay, on, on other countries on food supplies, necessities, especially chicken. Ah, so you see that when okay, Singapore is overly reliant on food. Okay, like chicken, then okay, we are susceptible to external shock. So what kind of cons what kind of consequence you realize? You realize that this will cause food shortage, right? Okay, on top of that, you can also see that especially if we are looking at uh if you're looking at your food supplies as a whole, okay, when there is um when when there's a global food shortage, this will what? Okay, this will result in higher imported costs. And cost push inflation. This one very important, uh. Cost push inflation. Okay, especially it's not pertaining to Malaysia alone. Okay, you realize that okay, the the Russia and Ukraine war itself has really uh, strained the global global food uh, supply chain really. Yeah, so you realize that a lot of food costs in Singapore has actually went up quite a bit. A lot. Yeah, you should. If you go to the hawker center, you realize that all the prices has been going up. Even if the prices are not going up, then you possibly don't. You realize that <laughs> if the prices don't don't go up, you will feel hungrier after you consume the meal. Okay, why? Okay, because your size of your food okay is going to shrink. Okay, so in term, there's a term called shrinkflation. Uh, you all can go and Google this. Shrinkflation. <laughs> So it simply tells you that when when uh producers are not in a position to raise price, okay, they will they will what? They will cut your food portion, a shrinkflation. <laughs> okay, so make sure you're able to relate this to uh, cost push inflation. Huh? 
Okay, worsening of the balance of payment. Okay, you can see that when a country is importing more than their export, okay, so you can see that X minus M go down. Okay, the assumption here is exports remains the same. That it can potentially worsen your balance of trade. Okay, item four, structural unemployment. Uh. Okay, in structural unemployment, there are only that few scenarios that structural unemployment are likely to happen. Okay, when I covered unemployment, okay, I, I, I believe I briefly touched touch touch on that, right? Okay, technology advancement, okay, disruption in technology, okay, and another popular one will be trade. Okay, especially okay, when a particular sector is displaced by cheap imports or cheaper imports. Then you realize that okay, this particular sector, normally a sunset industry, okay, will face massive unemployment. And they do not have the skill set to go to another sector. Okay, so some of the key terms that you want to be concerned about is cheap imports. Okay, and sunset industry. Okay, sunset. Uh, I'm so sorry. Okay, the thing, the color is not very <laughs> sunset industry. Sunset industry simply tells you that the industry is declining. Huh? So especially when you read through the case material, when they tell you that free trade, uh, okay, you have to, you have to be concerned. Okay, how? What are the consequences of free trade that may arise? Okay, structural unemployment. Demerit goods. Okay, demerit goods are also uh, they are also a, a consequence, especially when they are imported, okay, such as alcohol, tobacco, cigarettes. They are imported. Okay, this will worsen the health and the uh, non-material standard of living for the domestic citizens. Okay, so uh, a couple of ways that this can be tested in the practice question. They they specify benefits. Okay, so, um, or, or rather the optional assignment. Okay, look out for impact as well. Okay, when impact or effects are tested, okay, then it could be a mixture of cost and benefit. You can bring any two, any three from here. Okay, one, two, or two, one combination. Yeah, so the, the optional assignment was, is all about benefits. Huh? So make sure you use cover if you're attempting that. Is everyone clear? Okay, so I'm going to move on. Okay, um, I'm done with benefits and cost of trade. If there are any questions, you can, you can list this out. Okay, in your lecture notes, there will be definitely more things. Okay, I acknowledge that. Okay, but remember, we don't need everything. Okay, we just need good solid points, three points when we want to bring out an essay. Okay, and make sure you're able to develop the, the, the essay with good illustrations and examples. Okay, especially trade need a lot of examples. One, okay? Okay, so I'm going to move on okay, to patterns of trade. Okay, so patterns of trade. Okay, just now I seen that most of the boys have not learned, right? Boys only, right? Okay, can I just confirm one more time? Okay, it's the boys that haven't learned, right, boys? No? Boys, huh? Okay, the girls all learn already, right? Okay, so girls, okay, I'd like you all to type out okay, what is one what is one particular challenge when you learn patterns of trade? Or oh, don't re don't remember is also a challenge. <laughs> Unsure about the factors. Who else? Okay, someone don't remember and what trade really means. Okay, so this is probably your final touch on patterns of trade uh, before you are left on your own. The next time you see patterns of trade is in the exam ready. So please make sure you clarify whatever doubts that you have. Clear patterns of trade is really important. Okay, so patterns of trade. Okay, I want you all to note the definition. Uh. Okay, definition refers to the composition of countries trade with its trading partners. 
So there are three important parameters to measure patterns of trade. Okay, so please follow me closely. Three important parameters. If you're a highlighter, okay, please prepare a highlighter now. Okay, so the first one, the first parameter for patterns of trade is your volume. Okay, please highlight this word volume. How much? Okay, is traded between you and your trading partner. I'll call this V. The next parameter that determines the pattern of trade is your choice of your trading partner. Okay, who or what we call direction. Whom? Okay, or your direction of your trade. Okay, is is determined by your trading partner. Okay, so direction. And the last one is the most important one. Uh. Okay, what you trade, you can see that okay, a country imports and exports. You realize that the volume itself okay, only tells you how much, but it doesn't tell you what consists of the exports and what, consi what, what consists of the imports. Right? So if we are engaging in trade in, with Malaysia, we realize that the bulk of our imports come in the form of food. Right? And the bulk of the exports that we export to Malaysia, I don't know, seriously. Okay, but I do know that we import a lot of food from them. Okay, so we can see that the keyword here is composition. Okay, what is the composition of um, the exports and imports that we, that we, 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 we engage in with our trading partners? Okay, so you can see here. This can be this is largely influenced by comparative advantage and factor endowment. So offhand, uh, you got to know what is what kind of goods is Singapore producing. Okay, can y'all type out okay what do y'all think Singapore uh we, what kind of goods does Singapore have in comparative advantage and why? Okay, try try it try try it out now. That will determine our composition of our exports. Electronics, computer chips. <laughs> Later in the practice practice question, uh, okay, there will be a uh, goods that require advanced tax skilled labor. I'll give you one straight away. You realize that Singapore, uh, okay, we are we are self reliant on a on a, on one particular resource that is very vital, right? Okay, what is essential in your everyday life? Okay, if you don't consume that, ah, somebody got it right. Good, Elijah. Okay, so let's deduce that backwards. Okay, so Singapore has a, it starts with the word W. <laughs> exactly, right? Okay, so for Singapore, you want to be concerned about water production or water management. And new water. Although it was said that the Israelis are better like, in water water management, we probably learn from them. Okay, do you all agree? Okay, water management or water wastewater management is one of our key price assets, right? Okay, so later on in the practice question, there will be more. Huh? Okay, so whatever they have typed, they are good, but they, are, they they can be better, can be refined. Okay, so they are they are. Uh, and then you realize that water management is uh, can be influenced by our comparative advantage. Probably we have the technology to do that. Huh? Okay, so I want to quickly move on to the factors that affects your patterns of trade. Okay, so remember the three components or the parameters will be volume, direction, and composition. How do we measure patterns of trade? Okay, it's through volume, direction, and composition. Okay, so what are the factors that affect volume, direction, and composition? Then we have okay, these two subcategories known as inter trade, inter industry trade, and uh, uh in intra industry trade. I'm so sorry, uh, okay, typo. Okay, you can cancel and put it by the bank. Okay, I'm not so I'm not sure why they Okay, this one move move to the bank. Okay, can everyone join me in this? Inter industry trade and intra industry trade. 
So some of the students tell me, okay, they are not sure about the factors. So now I give you all the factors here, but you need to know how to use them. Okay, so what are the, first of all, we need to differentiate between inter-industry and intra-industry. What's the difference between them? What does inter and intra-industry tell us about? How can we, how can we differentiate the both of them? Okay, so intra-industry trade tells us that it is trade within similar industries. Okay, so the keyword here is within. Within similar industries. Okay, when you look at inter-industry trade, we are looking at trade between different industries. Okay, so a better perspective of intra-industry trade, okay, we can be looking at what? Okay, trading of your 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 cloth apparels, right? Okay, Japan. Okay, what is the biggest cloth apparel or what is the biggest uh cloth apparel that we know? Uniqlo, right? Everyone knows Uniqlo from Japan, right? Okay, so why is why is why 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 is why is Uniqlo engaging in trade? Japan's Uniqlo engaging in trade with probably uh Spain, okay, Zara. Okay, why are there different out why why are there outlets of uh, Uniqlo in Spain? Why are there outlets of Zara in Japan? Ah, uh, then later on we'll we'll we'll, we'll look at that. Well, why what's the basis of intro industry trade? Okay, but primarily all the actions are uh, happen at inter industry. Okay, so this one important. Put a star here. Okay, is everyone clear? Intro industry can happen, but not common. Most of the time is inter industry. Okay, inter industry is very useful. Okay, to illustrate. Later on, I'll show you in a short while. Okay, so the next thing that I want you all to focus on is the third acronym. Okay, the third acronym, if you have a highlighter, you can highlight all this. Fitbit, huh? All right, so we are not able to include the watch in, uh, in, <laughs> in the book because of trademark issues. Okay, we can't include. Fitbit. Okay, this is. Uh, I went to Google. and okay, this is the Fitbit watch. Supposed to be a. Uh, anybody knows what's a Fitbit watch? Do you all have that? And what is it? What is it? What is it good to? What is it known for? Uh? Anybody knows? <laughs> if I'm not wrong, it's, it's supposed to track your heart rate monitor, that kind of thing. In these days, uh, it's, it can be. It can be. The functions have been replaced by Apple Watch, uh, Yeah, but Fitbit. Okay, so next week I'll be testing you on Fitbit again, ah. Huh? Okay, but I want you all to, okay, no, okay, these are the six factors that affect your inter-industry trade. Okay, so I'll go through one by one. So later on in the practice question, I want you all to focus on number one. Okay, number one is very important, especially factor endowment. Okay, your factor endowment, okay, is going to result in different countries having different comparative advantage in different production. Okay, so remember the concept actually comes from the coffin. Huh? See? It comes from the second point from the coffin. Do you see that? Different factor endowment will result in different, okay, or different countries having lower opportunity costs in different production. Okay, so if a country is relatively endowed with land, okay, a lot of land spaces, then they are likely to have a lower opportunity cost in agricultural production. Okay, if a country like Singapore is endowed with high skilled workers, then in that case we are likely to export or likely to have comparative advantage in okay, uh, accounting services, law services. Okay, so this is how we want to deduce. But of course, when we look at Fitbit alone, Factor endowment is just one of the sub-components for comparative advantage. Okay, so later on in the practice question, there are a lot more factors. You may want to look out for sources instead. Huh? Okay, that can explain okay, how different countries will, will have different kinds of comparative advantage. Okay, not necessarily factor endowment alone, okay, but it's a good start. Okay, 
And when you realize that different countries have different comparative advantage, then this will shape their composition of how much they export. Right? Okay, so they are going to export goods that they have a comparative advantage and they are going to import goods that they have a comparative disadvantage. So do you see how okay, inter-industry trade and the first factor can, is going to affect the, the parameters through the composition approach? Okay, so if you have different comparative advantage, it's going to affect what you export and what you import. Okay, you're going to export goods that you have a lower op opportunity cost in production. And you're going to import goods that you have a higher opportunity cost in production. Or what we call comparative disadvantage. Okay, so whatever that you address uh, must relate to volume, direction, and composition. Sometimes it can be one of these three components. Sometimes it can be all three. Most of the time it's two. Okay, but there must be an attempt to relate to the parameters of how much, to whom, and okay, what is the composition. How do we link to volume? A volume is actually fairly straightforward. Okay, uh, I will probably show you in the second one. Okay, like I say, uh, some, of, some of the options can, can be one, some of the options can be two, some of the options can be three. Okay, so second one, income level. Okay, income level, you realize that when a country experiences higher income level, okay, this is going to result in higher demand for imports, right? Okay, higher demand for imports is going to result in higher demand or higher volume of imported goods and services. Then if we want to look at okay, the composition, then we can possibly look at okay, whether is this a normal luxury good, a normal necessity good or a normal inferior good. Okay, so normal goods, okay, your volume will go up. Uh, Okay, and to be more, more specific, the composition of your normal goods will go up when there's a higher income level. Okay, but the composition of your inferior goods will go down. Okay, so your overall volume goes up, okay, but the composition okay, may change. Okay, I'm not sure whether I've addressed that. Somebody type how to relate to volume. Okay, you need some concepts of YED here. Okay, so income level okay, can, uh, can actually affect our volume and composition. Okay, and, uh, and in case if you wonder direction, <laughs> okay, and I'm going to show you how to play around with that. Okay, so taste and preference can also uh, be, be affected okay, or can affect your patterns of trade, okay, especially when um, specific countries are known to to export specific goods. Like for instance, when we have a new iPhone coming out, uh, then in that case, okay, we are going to import more from the United States. Uh, then direction is going to be very clear. United States, we are going to buy more imports. Okay, and the composition will be more iPhones. Okay, because of new iPhones that are released. So taste, taste and preference can also shape your 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 patterns of trade. Huh? Okay, so you realize that in case if you're not sure, these two are actually what we call demand factors. Okay, remember Egypt? Okay, income and taste and preference. So the first three, okay, you can see that I'm going to illustrate the last three and you realize that they are distinctly different from the first three. Okay, FIT, I'm done. Huh? Okay, anyone has any issues? Like I've said, so long as there's a reasonable attempt to relate to volume or direction or composition, I'm happy. Most of the time, composition is the most important concept. Okay, followed by volume and direction, okay, they are of equal importance, but composition is the most important. That's why you read the definition. This is the most important one. All right. So now, okay, let's look, move, move, move on to 4, 5, and 6. 4, 5, and 6 are actually limitations of your comparative advantage here. Okay, you can see here, factor immobility, transport costs, okay, and a, okay, there's one more that's not here. Okay, I'll cover this. Okay, and, and restrictions. Restrictions, here. Uh, trade restrictions, this one. 
So you can see that barriers to trade, uh, especially barriers to trade, can affect your direction really, uh, really, really closely. So for for instance, if you if you realize what Singapore has been doing, okay, remember when when the when the war broke out between Ukraine and Russia, okay, Singapore was one of the few countries that stepped out immediately to denounce the war, right? Okay, and part of the denouncing the war includes a sanction that's imposed on Russia firms. Okay, so you can see that when there are trade sanctions or there are trade barriers imposed on the country, okay, this will affect the direction directly. Okay, I'm not interested in buying or selling goods with you. Okay, and this will affect the volume of your trade. First of all, I decide that I don't want to I don't want to deal with you. Okay, so there will be no direction of goods and services going to and fro. And then your volume and your composition is going to fall as a result. So this is how we want to play with barriers to trade. Okay, so barriers to trade are normally okay, countries target or, or targeted at countries. But sometimes it's also targeted not only on countries but on specific goods. Uh, then in that case, the composition of your exports and imports are affected. So we'll be covering more of this in uh, protectionism. Okay, when we actually learn that uh, trade barriers or, or what we call import tariffs can actually distort the imports okay, of a country. Okay, so this will be covered in, in depth in the future under protectionism. So for any, everyone is is anyone is everyone following me in terms of uh, on trade barriers? Okay, the example that I used earlier was quite quite easy, right? Quite straightforward, right? Yeah. Okay, five and six are a little bit abstract. Okay, I'll illustrate briefly. Okay, so you realize that part of the limitations of theory of comparative advantage tells us that there is factor immobility. Okay, so you see, imperfect in the markets simply tells us that factor immobility exists. Okay, so an example to illustrate how imperfection in the market affecting your patterns of trade would be what? Okay, so for instance, we know that Singapore probably has a comparative advantage in water management, right? Okay, but because of factor immobility, Okay, we realize that our resources are not perfectly compatible okay, to produce full-scale water management. Are you all following me? Okay, so not all our factors are, 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 or the skill sets are transferable to produce water management. Okay, and therefore, despite having a comparative advantage, because of factor immobility, okay, we have restrictions or we, have, uh, we are going to face uh, issues trying to focus and specialize on water management and this will actually inhibit our ability to sell our water management goods and services oh, okay so factor Im factor immobility and what we the last question of the quiz whether theory of ca is likely to hold in reality it's not going to hold in reality yeah? okay so this is going to inhibit um, your comparative advantage and it's going to affect especially the composition of what they're going to sell despite having comparative advantage. Huh? What does it mean by artificial barriers to entry? Okay, so this, uh, someone mentioned barriers to, not, not barriers to entry, barriers to trade. Okay, all these are what we call trade sanctions. And this will be covered more under protectionism. Okay, it will be covered next week. Okay, so these two are related topics. So in a nutshell, okay, barriers to trade or what we call trade barriers means that okay, we are going to inhibit export and import. Okay, like I said earlier on, okay, the, 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 the easiest example is Russia. Right? When Singapore denounces the war, okay, they are going to cut off trade ties with Russia. So when they cut off trade ties with Russia, it means that I'm not going to buy or I'm not going to sell anything to Russia. Right, so the barriers to to export and import to buy Russian goods and going to sell Singapore goods into Russia is going to be raised significantly, such that no trade can exist. Okay, I'm not sure whether I address. Okay, if not, you can stay back and ask me. Ah, uh. okay, thanks for asking. Okay, uh, make sure you copy down all these. Are uh, very very important. Alright, so another thing that actually shapes your patterns of trade is transport costs. Okay, so we know that in theory, transport costs don't exist in theory of comparative advantage, right? 
Yes or no? Okay, it simply tells us that the country is going to import goods that are, uh, or rather, okay, countries are going to engage in, in trade where re relative countries have lower opportunity costs. Okay, so how can we use the concept of transport costs here to actually explain your uh, patterns of trade? So we use these two examples, Malaysia and Vietnam. So if we know that Vietnam has a lower opportunity cost in chicken production, okay, this is higher, right? Okay, by right, okay, Singapore should import from Vietnam. Agreed? But why is Singapore importing from Malaysia in the first place? <laughs> if Vietnam is known to have a lower opportunity cost in chicken production, Exactly. Okay, so transport costs in real life okay, is often not negligible. Okay, so in this case, okay, we realize that transport cost is going to be quite substantial. And it probably makes more sense to import from Malaysia because of substantial transport costs from other countries if they have to be flown over. Okay, so opportunity costs cannot explain a lot. And therefore, okay, your transport costs can often shape, shape your composition. Is it that we want to buy from Malaysia? It's not that we want to buy from Malaysia. It's because we don't have choice. We have to buy from Malaysia. Right? Okay, so this is how you can, you can play around with this point, uh, transport costs. Okay, so so far, okay, is everyone familiar with in, inter-industry trade, Fitbit? Okay, so focus on the F, uh, F and comparative advantage is exceptionally crucial. Okay, the rest, good to know. Now I'm going to move on to the right side, intra-industry. Okay, so you realize that why are industries, are why do they engage, even if they are producing a similar, similar good, okay, why are they engaging in trade? Okay, number one, okay, there are preference of different quality and different variety of product. Okay, so best to learn from examples, right? Okay, so what is the key difference between these two brands, Uniqlo and Zara? You know that these two are the two biggest brands that, that represents two different countries, right? Uniqlo, Japan. Okay, Zara, Spain. Okay, so how are they exactly different? Type it out, try. And okay, you guys are probably more more in tune with fashion than Mr. Teal. Mr. Teal only wear one shirt. <laughs> it's either white or black. <laughs> yeah, not, not Zara or Uniqlo related. Oh, come on, let's try. Why do you think Japan and Spain okay, could possibly engage in trade in clothes, clothes apparel? What's the difference between, what's the key difference between uh, Spain's Zara and Japan's Uniqlo? Alright, so Uniqlo will be more casual. Zara is more of a luxury. Uniqlo has more plain designs. Zara is more trendy. Or oh, Uniqlo is more mass market, right? And Zara is probably more luxurious good. Okay, so we can see that okay, different different uh <laughs> different fashion items appeal to different different uh target audience. Uniqlo is more plain, Zara more fashionable. Yes, okay, so you can see a uh, variety of product will attract different custom or uh, custom audience or different uh, uh, cust uh, different target audience. Huh? Okay, so we can play around with your preference for different goods or differentiated goods. So another key term that you want to be concerned about uh, is differentiated goods. Differentiated, okay, and different. Inter-industry trade is all about different goods. Okay, intra-industry trade is differentiated goods. You realize that one key, one, one, one word has two different meaning, right? <laughs> oh? Okay, so very important. Huh? Okay, this one will come up for quiz huh, next week. Different and differentiated. Alright, so another key consideration for intra-industry trade, how, why, or, or why does it occur and how does it affect your patterns of trade is the economies of scale, right? So for instance, okay, if Japan's Uniqlo is able to expand rapidly to other countries, 
Okay, then they are able to exploit your economy, your internal economies of scale through specialization. Okay, so this is an, another possible way to illustrate why, why trade arises, okay, especially through intra-industry trade. Okay, so whatever it is, uh, let me quickly sum up. No matter is it inter or intra, make sure you're able to relate to either volume, direction or composition. Most of the time, composition can be achieved. Okay, so a few more key things to patterns of trade. Patterns of trade are they are fairly popular essay question. Later on, will be a case study though. Okay, so things to note when you encounter patterns of trade in an essay question. If you encounter patterns of trade, okay, it is always advised to bring in Fitbit. Always advise. Okay, this is the most important one. Not Fitbit, huh? Okay, the F, especially the first alphabet. Okay, so you prob you probably want to illustrate how factor endowment will lead to different country having different comparative advantage. You need the four tables. And you need two metro. Okay, to illustrate this. Clear? Okay, the two the, the four tables and two metro can easily address the composition. V volume also. <laughs> yeah, and direction is very clear cut. Two countries, right? So you see that the, the four tables can ad address all these three in one shot. Okay, so this is this is this is the suggested approach. Uh, whenever you encounter POT questions, patterns of trade, okay, you you, know, you have to use the four tables and two metro. <coughs> Alright, so some of the schools have a set different illustration. So on top of in, in on top of inter and in, intra industry. Okay, they use what? They actually use, okay, this one I won't cover. Okay, they use demand and supply analysis. Okay, I'm sorry, my color cannot see. Demand and supply analysis. Okay, so uh, like I've said, this is not popular. So I will not cover this. Okay, so inter and intra industry is good enough. Okay, so um, if you if you're not sure about demand and supply analysis, you can pro you can possibly book a consult. Okay, then I'll, I'll I'll address that separately. If not, I don't see the need to because it's not important. Inter and intra is good enough to address patterns of trade. All right. So with this, okay, I'm going to move on to exam purpose. So for exam purpose, okay, make sure you're able to relate vow to protectionism. Okay, vow is the cause consequence. Concerns of trade. Okay, you got to be familiar with cover and vault. Okay, for benefits and costs. Okay, especially in essays like what I've covered. Okay, when patterns of trade, basis of trade is tested, you have to use theory of CA and numerical tables to illustrate volume, composition, and direction. Right, the four tables are really good in illustrating this tree. Volume, higher world total output. Direction two countries. Okay, you can see a direction clearly. Composition, you can see cloth and wheat. Okay, how are they going to be changed when there is a when 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 countries specialize? And lastly, okay, you got to be familiar with illustrating uh to when you're illustrating POT patterns of trade, you have to be concerned about inter-industry. Okay, the factors can be found in inter or intra-industry trade. More than often is inter. Okay, then intra. So inter is more important. Huh? Okay, so later on, okay, the practice question, okay, will be testing on inter-industry trade. Okay, how patterns of trade, uh, you have to illustrate how patterns of trade arises, okay, using inter-industry trade. Huh? Okay, so with this, okay, I am done for today's content. Okay, you can go for your break. Okay, for students who have earlier questions, you can stay back and ask me. Okay, if not, I'll see you guys once you are back from a break. Thanks.
Alright, when you're back, please turn on your webcam. Thank you. We are going to start in about 2 to 3 minutes time. And please make sure you are seeing the same question paper. The one on Africa and Singapore. Okay, if you are seeing the same question paper, can you indicate on the chat? Okay, so most of you are back. Okay, so I will quickly cover what you need uh, for today. Okay, so these are some of the feedbacks that I received from the earlier sessions. Okay, so um, you may want to take down some notes, especially if you haven't, uh, if you have printed that out, maybe take down some notes. This question is about patterns of trade between these two countries. Huh? Okay, so when patterns of trade are going to be uh, is tested, you want to look out for okay, the factors that affects your patterns of trade, which can be illustrated within with inter and intra. So you realize that Singapore and Africa they are quite they're quite distant, right? <laughs> There's not much similarity between between them, right? So we have to quickly ascertain uh, whether it's inter or intra. Okay, whether the, the industries that they or the, or the trade they are going to engage in, is it within the same industry or is it different industry? Okay, so this is the first thing that I want to look at. Inter or intra. Okay. And next. Based on what you have deciphered under inter or intra, then we want to look at, okay, let's say if you're looking at inter industry, okay, whether Fitbit can be used here. Okay, so I want you all to focus especially for the alphabet F. Okay, not necessarily factor endowment, okay, but you want to be concerned how does okay, Singapore or Africa, are there any particular mentioning about how they develop their comparative advantage? Okay, so I want you all to be exceptionally concerned uh, how Singapore or Africa in this extract they are able to develop their comparative advantage or, or any mentioning that they have a particular strength in a particular production. Okay, you can infer that there's a comparative advantage. Okay, and your comparative advantage in a particular production will affect your composition. Normally volume and composition. So direction is given. Singapore and Africa is given. Okay, these two are is given. No other countries are involved. Maybe later you see China come coming into the picture. Oh, okay, but primarily I want you to focus on volume and composition. Direction could. Okay, there's one particular one particular extract that you you want to be concerned about when they talk about China. This one, ah, huh? okay, this can affect your direction of trade. Okay, and you want to relate to. Okay, so if you have decided inter inter industry trade is tested, then look out for Fitbit factors. If intra industry factors are tested, then look out for the two factors that are stated in the book. Okay, the other two, okay, economies of scale, or you want to look out for different um preference of differentiated goods. Then you want to relate this to V C D, volume, composition, direction. Is everyone clear? So this is the approach that you should adopt. Okay, for patterns of trade. Okay identifying the factors which is inter and intra and consistently relating them to volume composition and direction with the extra emphasis on the alphabet f okay or com comparative advantage not necessarily factor endowment huh? okay so with this um i'm going to kick start the time practice okay there will I'll give you all 20 minutes okay so try to uh, uncover at least two, at least two to three factors here huh Okay, two to three factors explaining the patterns of trade. Okay, so with that, okay, I'm going to give you 20 minutes. Start starting now. Okay, all the best.
Alright, that's it. Stop writing. When you are ready, please turn on your webcam. Okay, and we will power through the very last session. Uh. So I hope we have adhered to the principles of patterns of trade earlier on. So um, before we kick start, I would like you to try to illustrate okay, what is one particular challenge that you encounter when you are doing this question. Any particular challenge? Please type it out. Over time, actually, over time is uh, you see ah, uh, this this keyword very very interesting. Someone brought up, okay, uh, don't know how to illustrate explain over time. Over time, ah, uh, okay, can actually be found here. You see, over time means that it implies that nothing is static over time, right? Agreed. Okay, so, okay, our friend here probably can come into the picture. Okay, so what kind of what kind of comparative advantage can be developed over time? Okay, dynamic. Finding factors, yeah. Finding factors, I agree. Okay, but we need to establish, okay, or we need to be mindful about okay, which one to find, right? Okay, which un, uh, we need to find, or rather we need to establish under inter or intra industries are we going to find the factors, right? So which one do you adopt, inter or intra? For Singapore and Africa, are they going to engage in trade Okay, from different industries or differentiated industries? Yeah, inter, uh. okay, so inter is most likely to be Fitbit. Uh. Okay, use intra, then God saves you. Okay, only God can save you. Okay, so with that, okay, I will want you all to I'll, I'll, I'll quickly screen the answer. Okay, don't be too concerned about the answer. I'll activate it right after okay, the, the session today. Okay, so your submission timing is 12, 12 p.m. tonight. 12 a.m. tonight, so sorry. 12 a.m. Uh. Okay, you have a lot of time to do. Okay, so if you, if you for whatever reasons, you cannot submit before 12 a.m., please let me know before 12 a.m. Okay, so late submissions, you all know my style. Okay, I don't need to repeat that. Yeah, okay. So with reference to the data, explain how the patterns of trade between Singapore and Africa may change over time. So we earlier on identified that inter-industry trade uh, is going to be used. Okay, let's try. Maybe one of all of you type out okay, one factor each from Fitbit. We, we understood that inter-industry is tested, right? So which part of inter-industry is used? Which part of Fitbit? Fitbit? Okay, so um, barriers to trade from where? Someone brought up barriers to trade. Are there any barriers to trade? Okay, so they sign a treaty. So signing a treaty means that okay, you are eliminating trade barriers, right? Okay, it's the opposite of trade barriers. You can also you can also interpret it that way. Okay, so you can see okay investment investment treaties here. Okay, it's going to remove trade barriers. Sure. Okay, but I'm not sure whether is it used to is it can be used to illustrate the the uh, barriers of trade. Huh? Okay, see here. Agreement protects the interests of countries in increases investment flow. Not trade flow, uh, investment flow. Uh. Yeah. So maybe when we learn about globalization, uh, when, when I talk more about free trade agreements, yeah, we got to know that okay, uh, investment treaties or FTAs, for instance, not all the time will they cover trade. Okay, sometimes they only cover investment okay, or capital flow. Yeah, but that's a good point to start. Someone else brought up food endowment, Africa's food factor and endowment, Af Africa's food crop. So for those who brought up factor endowment, <coughs> okay, where do you get the factor endowment from? Okay, how can we tell Africa is endowed with resources? Yeah, I, I, I agree. You see, you can see that Okay, this particular African country is going to export more sesame, shear nuts, cotton, and groundnuts, right? You see that? So what 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 causes the the the, the country okay, to enjoy such comparative advantage? Okay. 
Okay, you have to later on our uh, uh, let's later on I will illustrate how to string these two up. Uh. Okay, factor endowment is not a good point. Not here. <laughs> okay, I will show you why is it not here. Okay, but it makes sense. Okay, for countries like Africa when they have uh, they are endowed with land, okay, huge land size, by right, okay, they should have a comparative advantage, okay, in agricultural production, commodities production. Okay, but by left, uh, today we're learning things by left. Uh. Okay, not everything is mentioned in the extract. Okay, so factor endowment, yes. What about Singapore? Okay, have you encountered the factor endowment of Singapore and what are they good in producing? That may affect patterns of trade. So, so far, everyone is, is identifying Africa. Nobody brought up Singapore. Singapore, what is Singapore good in producing? Ah, you can see here. Urban solutions. Okay, they are going to expert areas of expertise in these areas to countries, to developing countries. And also here, you see? Port management, airport services, urban water treatment. Okay, so it does suggest that Singapore has a comparative advantage in these two areas, huh? Here you see, logistic, urban, solutions, airport, water, okay, accepted. All right, okay, so how are we going to identify um, which feedback factor to use? Okay, so obviously, uh, okay, we realize that the, um, these two countries stand to benefit when Singapore can export okay, all these kind of high-end services, port management and etc. to Africa. Africa potentially can export okay, a commodity such as sesame, shear nuts, cotton, ground nuts. Okay, so what could have explained this? We need to find Fitbit factors. Okay, so okay, with this, okay, let's quickly rectify okay, what we have identified earlier on. Okay, and if you have any factors, huh, okay, you, can, you, can, you can share with me. Alright, so the first one is income level. Okay, nobody brought up the I factor. How can we tell that there's I factor here? You can see figure one and table three. Uh, figure one and table three. Did you see that? Okay, figure one and table three tells us that okay, this Af African country is experiencing high income growth. Remember I mentioned earlier on Fitbit the I factor could also come in. Okay, so you can see that. Okay, so this is Fitbit. Uh, Fitbit I factor. Okay, and with high income growth Okay, this can result in importing of more goods and services from Singapore. Okay, so the assumption is it has to be a normal good. Okay, your YED has to be greater than zero. Okay, so you can see that this will result in higher volume of imports. And more importantly, it could also result in higher composition of Singapore imports, such as airport services, wastewater management. Okay, so key terms I'm looking out for, identifying the factor. If you brought up the I factor, I'm giving you the first mark. And the second mark, I will need to see how you're going to relate okay, to volume and composition or direction. Okay, or anything that suggests that Africa is going to import more from Singapore. Okay, so the keyword that's, that's also related between income okay, and volume and composition is this key concept called purchasing power. Huh? This one important, huh? Must use PP, uh, no PP, no marks. Oh, so you can see uh, income factor can come in to, to haunt you again, okay, especially patterns of trade. Okay, so far, anyone has issues with the first factor? Understand how the first factor is actually constructed? Yeah, so especially for those who, who mentioned earlier on, don't know how to use the factors. This is how you play around the factors. Huh? Okay, factor two is a little bit, is a little bit tricky. Okay, you got to think through. You can see here, factor two is going to affect the direction and volume. Okay, how is that so? Number one, China. You can see that China is facing okay, uh, higher wages, right? And this is going to affect their uh, export competitiveness of low-end manufacturing. So you can see that okay, when and it's costly to produce in China, then you read the extract, you read the extract um, a little bit more. 
But China is facing more expensive wages and therefore, who is they? Okay, they is China. They are going to move up the value chain as well. So many countries, many companies are shifting manufacturing out of China. And Africa, okay, which uh, with a growing middle class should capitalize on that. So this is the keyword. Okay, so you realize that there is a there is there is a outflow of manufacturing capital from China to Africa. Because it's getting too costly to produce in China. Okay, see? So now, okay, Africa, the concept of capitalizing means that Africa may be a more favorable destination. Okay, to develop manufacturing capabilities. Okay, they can they are able to absorb the manufacturing capital that's flowing out of China. Okay, and remember, over time, I just saw somebody ask me, right, over time, how to play around with over time, right? Ah, over time. Okay, so you can see that Africa stands to benefit when they can develop a comparative advantage on manufacturing goods over time. Okay, when they are able to absorb the manufacturing capital from, let's say, Japan, Korea, they find China too costly. Ah, then in that case, okay, when... Africa develop a comparative advantage in manufacturing goods, then okay, the composition of Singapore imports from Africa is going to be different, right? Initially, it will be what commodities, but now okay, it's going to be more okay, saturated or the higher volume and composition of manufacturing goods over time. Should Africa develop a comparative advantage okay, in manufacturing? Is everyone clear? So this is how we play around with the, the first alphabet F. Uh. Not specifically factor endowment. Okay, but to be more specific, we are looking at the sources of comparative advantage. Okay, dynamic comparative advantage can be developed over time. Oh, yeah. Okay, so factor three, okay, investment treaties. Okay, investment treaties, you got to be careful. Okay, it, Normally, okay, uh, just now somebody brought up is related to barriers to trade. Normally, okay, they are the same. Investment treaties normally include includes lowering of your trade barriers. Okay, but if you read the extract in totality, it does not suggest lowering of trade barriers. Okay, in fact, okay, what does it suggest? Okay, it suggests that okay, countries like firms like Olam should capitalize on investment treaties to invest in Africa. Okay, Olam is a Singapore firm. Uh. You can see that when investment treaties are signed, this protects the foreign investors' interests. And there will be higher level of investments to help Africa to develop its commodities, its CA in commodities export. Right? So without the investment treaties, firms like Olam will be more wary because, because they, 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 may, they, may get, they may they may they may get scammed in Africa, right? Okay, if you invest capital there, okay, your capital can go can go missing the next day. Uh, so with a formal treaty, okay, this is going to ensure investors' interests are protected. Then this will guarantee higher level of investment. And when there are higher level of investment okay, in the commodity sector, this will help Africa to build its comparative advantage in commodities over time. So the trigger here is not factor endowment, uh, it's not Africa's land size. Uh, okay, it is actually investments. Okay, the factor endowment here to be more specific, it is investment capital that can help okay, uh, this particular country to develop a CA over time. Okay, so I'm going to reject okay, the factor endowment of land, uh, although it is in theory right, okay, but you, you have to play around with the effort correctly. And the effort comes in the form of investments. They're endowed with investments. And investments normally also relate to transfer of technology and know-how. Huh? Okay, so once Africa is able to develop okay, a comparative advantage in commods, okay, then okay, Singapore is able to okay, increase the import of Africa's uh, commodities and composition of you know, commodities into Singapore. Clear? This is how you play around with... Um, Volume and composition. Direction also can. Uh, okay, because the, the direction is actually what? Is the investment treaty is signed between two parties, right? So this is going to promote okay, trade between these two countries. Huh? Or investment between these two countries. Direction could also work. 
Okay, any two ah? Uh, okay, uh, no, sorry, any three, any three factors here, any three. Okay, the last one is exceptionally easy. Okay, all you need to is just to identify Singapore. So a lot of students will only focus on Africa for some strange reason, but you also need to look inwards. Okay, Singapore. Okay, you can see that Singapore enjoys comparative advantage in all this. Okay, you can either use extract six or extract seven to suggest that there is uh, expertise and comparative advantage. And therefore, Singapore okay, should specialize and export such goods, increasing the volume and composition of this capital and technology intensive goods. Okay, so the last factor requires you to look inwards. So there are a total of four factors you can consider. Okay, most of them involves Fitbit, okay, the F word. Okay, not particularly factor endowment, okay, but your sources of competitive advantage. Okay, it's only one of them that is involving income. Clear? But of course, okay, if when you're exposed to more case studies, you will see that there are more, more varieties. Uh, okay, like like uh, trade barriers. Okay, next time we learn that globalization can also affect your patterns of trade as well. Huh? Okay, so with this, okay, I'm going to quickly run through the Marcus comments. You can run, you can possibly use demand and supply factors instead of inter intra, although I don't recommend, but you can use that. Okay, so uh, I also do not recommend using external factor endowments that are not suggested in the extract, although in theory it could work. Okay, but it's not suggested in the extract. The, the comparative advantage in commodities is developed through investment investments from OLAM, okay, not from factor endowment. Huh? So you should refrain from using external factors. Okay, so with this, okay, I'm done for today. Thank you for joining me on, a, on such a hot Saturday afternoon. I appreciate all your time. So I will activate the answer key. Your submission deadline is 12 a.m. tonight. Okay, you have more than enough time. Okay, unless you have you have any reason why you cannot submit by the end of tonight, let me know ASAP. Okay, if not, I do expect to see your scripts at the end of today. Huh? Okay, if you have any questions for me, stay back and ask me. Okay, if not, okay, that's it. And I'm going to stop recording.